In this video, we're going to be looking at how doing math operations with fractions is affected when we have mixed numbers. Um, oftentimes, you'll need to add, subtract, multiply, or divide when you have mixed numbers involved. So what special considerations do you have to do? Well, when you're multiplying and dividing with fractions, you really can't have mixed numbers at all. Uh, they complicate all of our rules. So the number one rule when you're working with mixed numbers is the first thing that you want to do is change our fractions, change those mixed numbers to improper fractions. What that means is we don't want that whole number, that big whole number in front. We just want a numerator and a denominator before we start. So how do we change mixed numbers to fractions? Well, there's three, in this case, there's three holes and then two fifths that are left. Basically what we want to do is just see how many fifths would that be altogether. So what we're going to do is if there's three whole ones, that would be five fifths for each of them. So five times three gives me 15 plus those two additional ones that we had there. So 15 plus two gives me 17 and three and two fifths and 17 fifths correspond and are exactly the same fractions. So that's how we change that mixed number to an improper fraction. If you want a little rule to remember, you're going to take the denominator of your mixed number. You're going to multiply it by the whole number out front, that big whole number out front. And then you're going to add the numerator. So denominator times the big whole number plus the numerator that will be our new denominator, or our new numerator rather, our new top. And then we keep the denominator the same. All right, so let's walk through that. Uh, so let's try that here with this one. So five and one third, we're gonna do three times five gives me 15, plus one more there gives me 16, and then I keep the denominator the same, so I have 16 thirds. Now, in this particular example, what we want to do now then is do this multiplication. So now that it's a fraction, we multiply across the top, we multiply across the bottom, and reduce our answer if we can. Don't forget that it's often nice to go ahead and see if there's any numbers that will reduce or simplify. Unfortunately, in this particular case, there's nothing that's going to go into both uh, Seven, 5 and 3 don't go into 17, and 5 and 3 don't go into 16 either. So I can't really do any sort of reducing. So at this point then, all I'm left to do is just multiply the top and the bottom. Uh, so to start with, I do 17 times 16, and I'm just going to pull that up on my calculator here. That gives me 272 as a numerator. And on the bottom, I'm going to do 5 times 3, with, which is 15. Now if I couldn't find any common factors here, there's not going to be any common factors here either. And so that 272 over 15 is going to be my best solution, and that is an improper fraction. Uh, for the purposes of this class and this assignment, leaving your uh, answer in this form is totally appropriate. If you'd like to change that number into a um, back into a mixed number, which sometimes is nice since if you started with mixed numbers, we like to have mixed numbers in there. See how many times 15 goes into 272. In this case, it goes in uh, 18 times. And then you'd need to see how many leftovers you have. So 18 times 15 is 270, which would mean that there's two left over. So we'd have two fifteenths. Again, this format here is fine for an answer, but if you wanted to change it back, that's all that you do. How many times does 15 go into 272? And then how many leftovers are there? Um, so again, anytime you've got a mixed number, we can't have that mixed number before we start doing multiplying or dividing. We have to change them. So let's try that with the next problem. Here we have four and a third, and we're dividing by five. Remember, um, we can't have this mixed number, so we want to change that. Three times four gives me 12, plus one gives me 13 thirds. So 13 is the new top with three on the bottom. And now what I want to do is divide that fraction by 5. Now 5 is not a fraction right now, but we will need to make it 1. So I need to do 13 thirds divided by 5 over 1. 
Now if you can remember from the last video when we're dividing with fractions, the first thing that we wanted, what we need to do is rewrite it. So we keep the first fraction the same, we change the divide to times, and then we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of that fraction. Oops, didn't flip that over there. So the 5 over 1 flips over to be 1 over 5. And now I have my new equivalent problem. 4 and a third divided by 5 is the same as 13 thirds times 1 fifth. This format now is great to work with. Again, see if there's any common factors on the top and bottom that you can reduce out. In this case, there is not. So we just multiply across the top. 13 times 1 is 13. Multiply across the bottom. 3 times 5 is 15. And that is going to be my simplified solution. All right, problem 15. This one we have an exponent, so we need to just remember what that means. That means we're going to take this negative 3 and a half and we're going to multiply it by itself. So this means the same thing as negative 3 and a half times negative 3 and a half. Remember when we look at the squared that because the parentheses is in front of it, everything inside that parentheses has to get squared, including the negative. So that's why I wrote it out this way in that problem. Now I can't do multiplication of fractions when they are in mixed number form. So the very first thing we have to do is change it to an improper fraction before we do anything else. So in this case we do 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7. We keep the bottom the same so it's 7 halves and don't forget it was a negative. So we have negative 7 halves for the first fraction. And since the second mixed number was the same, we should end up with the same improper fraction. And sure enough, 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7. Keep the denominator the same. So negative 3 and a half times negative 3 and a half is the same as negative 7 halves over 7 halves. Uh, no common factors on the top and the bottom, so we just multiply across the top and across the bottom. 7 times 7 gives me 49. The negative times the negative means this answer is going to be positive. And then on the bottom we do 2 times 2 is 4. And I have my simplified and reduced fraction. Nothing will go into both the top and the bottom there. Um, again, if you wanted to write that as a mixed number, 4 goes into 49 12 times with 1 left over. So that would be another way that you could write your solution. All right, so that's multiplying and dividing. And with multiplying and dividing fractions, it is essential that you change those um, values to mixed number, or those mixed number values into improper fractions. When we're adding and subtracting, it's not really quite as necessary. You can add the whole numbers and add the fractions together. Uh, you can subtract whole numbers and subtract fractions together. Um, but sometimes you have to do some really weird things with, uh, with carrying or different values like that. And you can avoid all of those problems just by also changing your mixed numbers into improper fractions when you add or subtract as well. Um, again, it is an extra step, but on a lot of problems where you uh, would kind of end up with some, with some trouble, changing them into improper fractions will keep you out of trouble. So let's go through and try that here with this one. Uh, notice in this problem we have 4 times 2 is 8 plus 3 gives me 11 fourths. And I want to add to 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7 halves. So I kind of like to change them all. That way you have a consistent method as you start out. Now, in this one, we're back to adding fractions. And remember, adding and subtracting is always more complex when it comes to any of our any of our rules. So the rules with adding is that we need a common denominator. Between 4 and 2, 4 actually works. So we can leave the first fraction as 11 fourths. And then we can change the second fraction by multiplying the top and the bottom by 2. That'll get me 4 on the bottom, which is the common denominator that I need, and 7 times 2 is 14 on the top. And now that the denominators are the same, I can add across the top. One, uh, 11 plus 14 is 25, and keep the denominator the same. We went to all that work to get the common denominator, so we don't change the denominator when we add or subtract. So in this case, uh, 25 over 4 is a great solution, or you could write it as uh, 6. 4 goes into 25 6 times with 1 left over as another way that you could write that solution. Um, and notice if we would have tried to add 3 fourths and 1 half, we'd have ended up with more than 1. We got kind of some messy stuff. We don't have to worry about any of that, um, those things that might have come up by doing this particular method. Uh, with this one, let's just go ahead and do this mixed number method for everything here. Here we have 5 and a half minus 3 and a third. Here this would give us 11 over 2 minus 
3 times 3 is 9 plus 1 is 10 thirds. We do in fact need a common denominator in this particular problem. Between 2 and 3 we get 6 as a common denominator. Uh, here we'd have to times the top and the bottom by 3. So that would give me 33 over 6 is the same as 11 over 2. Here to get 6 on the bottom I'd have to times the top and the bottom by 2. So I'd end up with minus 20 over 6. Then you can subtract the tops. 33 minus 20 is 13. Keep the bottom the same and there's my improper fraction. With number 18, same deal, very similar problem. Here I get uh, 2 times 5 is 10 plus 1 is 11 halves. Here I get 3 times 3 is 9 plus 2 is um, 11 thirds. Again, I'd need a common denominator in this problem, so I could try to get 6. Here I'd have to times by 3, so I get 33 sixths, similar to what I did last time. This time I'd have to times by 2, that would give me 22, and I'd end up with 11 sixths as a solution here for this particular example as well.